If you've never attended a Church United, you need to do that. It will absolutely revolutionize your congregation. It's blessed our congregation, and I encourage you, please send your folks to be a part of it, support it, and watch as we glorify Jesus Christ. Okay, um, everyone, uh, welcome to our program. Today, we are very happy to have uh, Jim Doman, the president and founder of Church United, to be with us. And uh, hi, Jim. Hello, Paul. Good to be here with you today. Uh, ni hao. Ni hao. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Wow. This is, uh, we live in a, such an exciting time. And we do, we do, and unprecedented times, and I'm seeing the people of God arise and move and stand up to the government and advance his kingdom, Paul. It's been amazing to watch. Yeah, this is real stuff that uh, I'm excited to. So, um, first, I would like to uh, have you talk about, you know, the organization that God called you to found, uh, which sure. is Church United. Um, yeah, and you have been on that journey for quite a few years to, uh, to lead this movement and what kind of progress you have seen uh, and the hope you, know, you have seen and uh, also um, the connections that you built, you know, yeah. both the political realm and uh, also on the faith, the community, especially the leaders of faith. So this yeah, this month is a uh, our anniversary month. Church United has been in existence for four years. Mm -hmm. Back in 2016, we started, but in 14, God started 2000. Actually, 2012, God started laying some of the groundwork, and um, I had gone to Washington D.C. on a pastors retreat and thought, wow if we could get pastors to engage in government, that could help transform California. I was so moved. I took my wife the next year and I, I could not get one California pastor to come to DC with me. And it was almost like going on a mission trip. Nobody wanted to no, know we're not going to DC with all those politicians. So I asked my wife, could we take out $6,000 out of our savings account? We did. And we scholarship six pastors. I was one of the six. And we've now grown to over 2,000 pastors in California, Paul. It's amazing. Wow. And we went from nobody wanting to go to we sponsored those six. We did a video. The year after that, 27 pastors went. Uh -huh. And then we had 70 pastors go in 2016, the year we founded Church United. And here's what God did, Paul. There was a homosexual uh, writer added to a bill. I would have solidified some homosexual rights in the United States mm -hmm. on a water bill from a Democrat in New York. Mm -hmm. And we were asked to lay hands on members of Congress to stop this bill from becoming law. Mm -hmm. And I think you know my story. I'm a former homosexual. I'm married with three kids. Yeah. But uh, God said, this is your story. You lay hands on these people in Congress that the bill would stop. And the next day on the floor of the House of Representatives in 2016, the bill failed. And we just said, hallelujah, praise God. And something else happened during that same trip. I, we were worshiping uh, in the United States Capitol in the basement with pastors and uh, Christians, uh, members of Congress. And I stood up and made a fool out of myself, Paul. I said, they are killing um, and aborting babies and selling their parts in my, in my city. What can we do? And no one said anything. I sat back down. I was embarrassed, but I just, I had to be a voice for the voiceless. Well, we prayed about that. The next day I got an email from now Senator Marsha Blackburn out of Tennessee, United States Senator. She said, our, I'm the chair of the um, uh, Select uh, Infant Lives Committee, and we are investigating these evil practices in California. Two years later, the Orange County DA shut them down and find them $7.6 million never to do business again in the, in the United States. Uh, sh shut, which is shut down? Which organization? Uh, da Vinci Biologics, and uh, David Delighton broke the case, but Da Vinci Biologics and Yorba Belinda was shut down and fined never to do business again. Wow, because... Guess, 
guess because, how these evil people came to the United States? Okay, so be, because they actually aborting baby and setting their parts. That's why. Yes. They got shut yep. down. Yep. So that is like uh, on record. This is on. On record, the Orange County DA filed charges against them and fined them $7.6 million and has kept them from doing business again in California. Wow. It's, it, yeah. We, we, we definitely don't hear about it on the uh, mainstream media. No, no. This, that was what launched Church United. I okay. said, God, if you, I, I, I'm seeing you. If your people come together, we stop evil. We stand up against injustice and we do good, but the church has to come together. We Amen. can't be divided. And we stop horrific evils like this. Wow. And Paul, God showed me in 2016, if you bring my people together, this is what you can do. You can move the needle. You can stop evil, stand up against injustice. And Church United has watched this happen year after year after year. Wow. So that, that actually, it's a, it's a pretty rapid uh, achievement, you know, throughout only not many years, only three, four years, basically. Four years. So this grew from almost zero from 2,000 uh, uh, pastors behind you and join the Church United. They act, actually, they identify, they identify to that goal, the vision and uh, the calling. Absolutely. We help pastors respond to the spiritual issues in their community. Paul, we never tell them what to do, but we present the opportunity. When I said we take them on a missions trip to Washington, D.C., or California's capital, Sacramento, we scholarship them. We pay for their flight. Mm -hmm. We pay for the bus. We pay for their hotel and food mm -hmm. at a, at a, at a five-star hotel. Everything is taken care of, and we don't ask anything in return because mm -hmm. we want pastors to help them engage in government like so many biblical characters did, Paul. There's such a big disconnect. We don't learn this in seminary, and we haven't been taught this. Yeah, yeah. And that's the missing puzzle in the kingdom of God. It is. It is. I mean, look at Joseph. Look at Abraham, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Nehemiah, Daniel. Find me a major character in the Bible who was not interacting or, um, with, with the government. Look at Deborah. She was a female. Look at what the... Um, as a judge, look at um, Ruth and Esther. I mean, God's people were engaged in government with yeah. the highest officials. And why do we think in America, oh, we don't have anything to do with it. That's political. God is in the politics. God is in the government. And pastors see this firsthand when we take them on an awakening tours to the capitals. So what kind of uh, change of mind or the attitude or the action you have seen you know, before and after you take them to the trip. For example, we, we watch, meet with the congressmen, talk about, engage the important issues. And I, of course, you know, the, another issue we're going to talk about is the religious freedom, which is yeah. so critical. Yeah, please. So what we do, we have members of the United States Senate, uh, U.S. Senators speak to the pastors, members of the House of Representatives in, in Washington, D.C., who are believers, talk to the pastors. Paul, you know what happens? they lobby the pastors and that so they're it's like wait a minute the 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 shoe is put on the other foot and they're what they say is we can't change america pastors you can the church will change america politicians and laws don't change the heart mm -hmm. god does the people of god his pastors preaching um change and what jesus can transform lives that's what changes america and the pastors really go there moved. And again, we don't tell them what to do. The Holy Spirit moves and convicts them and helps them engage at levels that they've never dreamed of before. And we see them keeping their churches open, not allowing the government to say, we're going to shut you down. They stay open. Helps them engage to stop drag queen story hour or to stop pot being sold in a city. We've got stories of this where the churches come together in a city and stand up against these issues. This is exciting. So can you share with us like one or two examples of success story that actually, you know, turn the city around, you know, okay. because of this move and because uh, pastors, they really, you know, engage in this. So if you're familiar with the city of Orville in California, you may yeah, not I know. I, I Sacramento. With, yes, the pastor. Yeah, no, or, and it's, that's where the big dam is, and a lot of our water comes from that region. Um, those pastors after D.C. came together, united, and said, 
because they had a city council that wanted to bring pot to the city of Orville. Mm -hmm. It would have turned their beautiful city into a drug haven, drug town. So they got actually going to grow a lot of marijuana there. Grow, sell, distribute. They were coming in and taking over the city, trying to kick people out, taking warehousing space to make it a huge marijuana uh, distribution part of region in the state of California. Wow. And they have a city council of five, uh, seven people and only two Christians. The mayor and Pastor Scott said, no, this is wrong. Well, they were outvoted. They lost the vote, Paul. They were going to bring they, the, the marijuana industry already started buying up all the warehouses, the land to do this. Huh. And Scott r uh, rallied the pastors. Hmm. They got the church to vote, engage, and guess what? They voted off four bad city council members and put on godly men and women. They were able to stop the ordinance in time. And now they've got godly men and women on their city council and they have stopped pot from being sold, from being distributed or grown in their city. Wow, this is a wonderful story because so actually it does not sound that difficult, right? As long as a few pastors who got the vision, take the action, united together and mobilize the, the faith voters, and this can be easily done. It's not that difficult. It does not take Huge amount of money does not take it up, right? No, it's free. It doesn't even take you any money. A pastor on I could text the word I vote, have his people text I vote, I V O T E, to 73075, mm -hmm. and he could register every person on his congregation, everybody watching if they're doing it digitally online. Mm -hmm. They could register right wherever they are, and they could register to vote in this election. But Paul, here's the sad thing. Christians are not voting. This is a statistic that is, it's oh, free, it doesn't cost anything, but the people of God are still not voting. I think that breaks you know, God's heart. Not just break my heart, it breaks God's heart. Here, it's, let me, it's like God's bad, how, how bad is that? country, and then you're just gonna, you're gonna flush it down the toilet because you're not voting people who fear and have biblical values. So how bad, how low is the voting rate of Christians? So in the presidential election in 2012, 18% of evangelicals voted. 18%. <laughs> We're the, it's, it's sad. It's tragic. We're the largest minority group in the United States, the evangelical Christians. And we are not voting. Well, it ticked up 3% in uh, 2016 and the race with Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. We went from 18 to 21%. Those, that 3% increase, 2% voted for Trump, 1% voted for Hillary. That 2%, that's why Trump knows the evangelical vote is so critically important. Look what Trump has done for the people of God. For religious liberty, for freedom. He's the only president, only, that has said, I will not stand to have a baby ripped apart in a womb and kill, execute a full-term baby. Hmm. I was on a conference call with him and pastors here in California, and he said, pastors, I wait for the day I can have all of you in the Oval Office when I sign a life bill protecting babies in the womb. And Paul, if you don't support that, you're not a Christian. You cannot know God. You do not know Christ if you can kill children, if you can kill full-term babies. You cannot call yourself a Catholic. You cannot call yourself a Christian. You cannot call yourself, you are evil. You cannot kill babies, period. Uh, and I, so I we need to get Christians to vote, and that only 21% vote, and we're allowed to kill all these babies is absolutely evil. And we just sit back in the church and go, I don't want to get involved. Oh, I only talk about Jesus. Well, Jesus ain't for killing babies. And we have a president who will protect and protect life at all costs. Mm. I, I, this just shook me to the, to the core of my you know, spiritual backbone. You know, the Christians, only 18% come out to vote. And then only 3%, I mean, it only takes 2% more to help you know, Trump to win the election on yep. 2016. So imagine if 10% more, even like 30% Christians come out to vote, right? 10% more come out to vote and vote, vote for, for, 
for, for the Trump and also the, all the conservative, you know, by biblical value uh, candidates. I well, mean, I, the, 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 I think you know, the revival, the revival will just come in one day, right? I, I, all the churches are crying out for revival for so many years. And they are just missing the big key. This is the key. And they don't use the key to open the door and just keep, you know, banging on the door and crying out all at the door. This is not wisdom. This is no knowledge. This is ignorance. Absolutely. And, and also, you know, some of the pastors, they don't want to get into dispute, right? And they don't want to see the dispute in the church, arguments, and people leave. You know, so they, they choose to shut their mouth. They do. They, and they don't do anything. And we watch what's happening in California. Talked about religious persecution. Uh, a mega Latino church called me this week and said the county of Los Angeles came in and said, if you keep meeting indoors, we're going to find you. We're going to shut you down. Look what's happened to John MacArthur. And he's also in L.A. County. Look what's happening to Pastor Rob McCoy in Ventura County. Every time he holds church, he's getting fined. But guess what? He's not stopping. They continue to meet. God calls us to do that. We're to assemble. We're to do that. Amen. Wow. So um, the type of uh, uh, connection you have built up, uh, you, you know, in between the, because you are actually like the connector. You connect the, the church leaders and the, uh, uh, government. the congressmen, both in uh, the federal level and the state level. Am I correct? So, yeah, so let me give you an example of what happened. COVID this year, when we had uh, the uh, Paycheck Protection funding, the money the government gave to businesses, the church was a part of that. Well, guess what? I had U.S. Senators and our uh, Shan, um, uh, California Senator, Shannon Grove, she's a minority leader here in California, she was giving me all the information that would benefit the churches before it was made public, before it was made available to the media, and I was able to pass along that information to all the pastors in our network here in California. We were first in line, we had the first information, and thank you to U.S. Senators uh, Marco Rubio and, and uh, Tim Scott, uh, South Carolina and Florida, they both made sure the church was included in the PPP protection. Originally, it was not in there. It was and, so not. And, in, and their relationships with us, it was communicating with us to make sure they got the PPP loan. So that was one, one connection. But, you know, these are men and women who love and fear the Lord, Paul. They pray, they intercede for our country and want to help pastors and the church engage. So there, so there actually are still uh, quite a few God-fearing um, uh, 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 congressmen. Yes. Right? In, yes. in the federal and in the state level, who really wants to help uh, the church leaders. And, and that's what pastors realize when we take him to D.C. They go, we never knew. We never knew there were this many godly men, this many godly women. We had no idea because they're so disconnected. You don't learn about this in church. They're not preaching about it. You don't learn about it. And I went to seminary. I got my master divinity. We never talked about government. We never talked about engagement. We never talked about political parties. None of it was ever mentioned. And when I read scripture, Paul, I can't find a book in the Bible that doesn't call out the world's most powerful, notorious leader, whether good or bad, and God's people are either interacting with him or her, or they're the leader themselves. Amen. Okay. So why do we, um, you know, yes. so why do we think Excellent. in America we go, hands off, we're not, we're not going to do anything? So, so actually, God already prepared us godly men and women in the government. We just need to connect with them. And then together, united together, we can shine the light. Amen. Absolutely. And even when we're the minority, we're able to do things we can't do by ourselves. You're familiar in two, now 2018, another Church United success story. They tried to outlaw the Bible. They tried to say it was fraudulent because we believe God can transform homosexuals, lesbians, bisexual, and transgendered people. He can heal and, trans and transform. You've got a living testimony. Yes, exactly. But they wanted to stop that in California. Paul, they have the votes. They, they could have passed it. But God's, we help rally the church together. 
and by people's testimonies of former LGBTQ people, rainbow crossers, right. here in California to share their stories, and the pastors got behind them, supported them, the church came together and said, no, you can't do this. This is unjust. This is wrong. And the author, Assemblyman Evan Loeb, withdrew the bill in August of 2018. That was another victory that with Church United. Yeah, ex excellent. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Now, let's move to the uh, religious, um, religious freedom under attack. I think, you know, throughout the engagement of these years, I think you have experienced, uh, you know, how serious this issue has become. Um, Paul, it's shocking. There is only one organization that's protected under the Constitution. Businesses aren't mentioned. It's religious freedom. The practice of. There is nothing else is protected. And yet in California, because the church doesn't vote, we have liberal people doing evil things with appoint liberal judges. They're coming after pastors or coming after the church, mm -hmm. and they're trying to stop. And guess what? The courts are ruling in favor. It is all unconstitutional, but they've thrown out the law, which is California's constitution and the U.S. constitution, and they are coming after the church. And I'm embarrassed to say we only have about 1,500 churches that are open right now. And so many have shuttered their doors and are fearing the government and not God. It, it's so disturbing to me. Wow, 1,500. That's, uh, to me, it's an encouraged number already because you know i know very 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 few chinese uh, churches stay open so when i heard about you tell me that wow there are 15 you know actually 15 churches in california stay open to me 1, like 1500 yeah so we we just uh, you know I, I believe they these are the spearhead you know because the movement is there and 1500 you know and but we need more paul people need, need jesus people need god they need you you need the community the fellowship of the body of christ you that can't be replaced with the screen like what you and i are doing and i use the example if i light a fire and put it on the tv and watch it it does no good but if you're cold and you're next to a real fire you can put your hands over it warm up you smell the smoke you smell the wood there's, there's fellowship that begins. That's why God called us to do this. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree. I hope that uh, we're going to see more and more, you know, and, you know, through the churches, the right up, take position and vote. Like you said, it is a great point, right? Because just because Christians don't vote, and just because church leaders, they don't get in politics and mobilize congregation to register and come out to vote biblically, and therefore we got trampled left and right. Just like Jesus said, the salt is no longer salty. So it's just thrown outside and let the enemy, you know, trample all over you, you know, and shut you down. And well, it, 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 let me be real clear. You talk about that. It's not a Republican Democrat thing. It is a Christian responsibility. Yeah. It is a godly, it is biblical. And we need to vote and put, it's cr Christian citizenship and put godly men and women in places of authority. Yeah. Otherwise, like you said, you know, they just put those um, liberal uh, judges into the court and they totally ignore the, the constitution protection of the religious freedom and there's a rule against churches. Yes. Yep. And so we are stupid. I'm sorry. No, we are. This well, is post humanity. We could change California in one election cycle. If every Christian voted, we would yeah. flip every seat. And but the we don't vote. Vote. Yeah, we can put, yeah, okay. Godly governors, congressmen, judges, right, attorneys, Look what they school, did. school board, you know, directors, all these, like, the revival can come just in one day. And well, we are just, like, wasting so much time and energy doing things that's non-relevant. And this is no wisdom, and it's just wrong. Paul, we watched it in Orville, a simple, small city. All the churches, 20 churches came together. Yeah. And then was going to be godly men and women. And guess what? They kicked off the bad people. They stopped pot. And God prepared them when the paradise fire came through. It's like a revival. The church was able to meet the needs of the people in their city yeah. and in the greater um, uh, Butte County area. It's an incredible story. It's simple. 
All they did was come together and vote for godly men and women. Plain and simple. That's one city. There's 438 in California, Paul. If we had one church in each city do this, we would, we would flip everything in this state and start doing good instead of doing evil. Yeah, I pray that on this, in this uh, 438, God raised up leaders. Yep. And each and every one of them. That is the key. That's the door to, to the real revival and sustainable revival. If you want to change the state government, if you want to change the federal government, it happens in your backyard, right at your city council. You got to vote the right people in at the city level, and that's, that makes a chain link all the way up. But if you've got godly men and women you can support all the way up to the top, uh, we'll, we would flip the state in one election cycle. I think there is uh, the two layers to this. One is to, like, uh, to, to, uh, for Christians to come out to vote. The other one is um, also to encourage and mobilize a Christian to run for the offices. Because I think you shared with me that there are still thousands of offices in different level of the governments. Paul, let me, let, me, let me tell you the sad truth, what you're talking about. There are always Christians who run in every race all over. But you know what ends up happening? A godly man will come to a pastor and go, can I talk at your church? Nope, we don't get involved in politics. Why wouldn't you have a godly man or woman who wants to run, represent kingdom ideas, not introduce them to your church? That's foolish. We're to blame for that. We deserve what we have coming because we continue to, God brings great people, and we say, no, we won't, no, you can't come talk to our church. Paul, I, in Orange County, I couldn't even get churches to put a voting, the Orange County Registrar wanted to put up a mobile pop-up uh, voting booth in church parking lots. And so many pastors could just say, no, or I got to talk to my board. I'm like, come on, let's make this easy, church. It doesn't cost anything. They'll just put the booth in your... No, I'm, I'm sorry, Jim. We're meeting outside, and that's going to disrupt our church service. Disrupt it. It needs to be disrupted because your people aren't voting. You, you don't vote. You're not going to... You ain't going to get church service. Period. Yeah. Oh. As you oh. can tell, this gets me a little fired up. Yeah, I, I, I know, I know. I, I've been fighting this too, you know. <laughs> so, but, and, and I want the, to the Chinese church. Yeah. You, know what, you know what China does to people. Why yeah. are we letting California, Newsom, do that to California? This is communism what they're doing. Yeah. So my encouragement to the Chinese church is stand up, be counted, open, defy the government. The government is not, does not, does, the government does not tell the church what to do. The church tells the government what to do. Yeah, and also uh, there's constitutional protection. Yes. That God ordained on churches, and we pretend that we don't have that shield. E exactly. We're the only country in the world that has that at the state level and the federal government, and we're hiding, we're afraid, oh, we don't want to offend anybody, oh, I don't want to pay a fine, oh, it's gonna, we're going to get our insurance canceled. Well, who do you fear? God? Or do you fear the government and man and woman? Yeah. We're and called to fear God and God alone. Especially, like you said, such a time like this, you know, so many turmoils, confusions, depression, everything. This is just like, this is worse than 911, right? So yes. up to 911, people rush to churches, right? And this is worse than 911. Yep. So a church closes. Church closes. Where people have to go. And I'm sorry, a video screen doesn't touch the heart. Yes, God is using that. He's using that to reach, and new people are coming to Christ. I get that. But we cannot forsake assembling. You still have to come together and get that spiritual connection that only happens in church. Yeah, that's why, you know, church who stay open, they all experience the big increase of yes. the congregation, right? Like John MacArthur, I know that from 3,000 to 5,000, not 7,000. Jim Thompson and Marietta, who got arrested, the only pastor who's been arrested during all this, during yes. this time. Um, by the way, the charges were all dropped, and I, and I believe he's going to sue constitutionally for violation of his civil rights, state and federal, mm -hmm. um, to Pastor Jack Hibbs. All these churches who remain open, their numbers have more than doubled <laughs> the in, record tithing giving of all time. Record <laughs> tithing giving. 
I mean, everything's off the charts, new except, uh, people coming to Christ, but that's part of that 1500. You know, I had a pastor call me. Here's another great story, Paul, in Northern California, in Liverpool, Livermore. Jim, I'm the only pastor in Livermore that's going to open. There is no one else. I don't know what to do. I'm all alone. Help me. You have to know another pastor. I said, Pastor, um, I've got pastors all over the north. Let me call some and put you in touch with them. Let me tell you what God did. Because he wasn't afraid, because he opened his church, the non-Christian business owners, the mayor tried to shut down all of their downtown. The non-Christian business owners rallied around the pastor and said, Pastor, will you lead us? Think about that. Business leaders, marketplace leaders, and business owners, non-believers reached out to the pastor and they all said, Pastor, we're going to support you. We're going to come to your church. And when you open on Pentecost Sunday with all the other churches here in California, mm. you know how incredible that is? The influence. The, these are people who don't even know Jesus, and now they're going to church because the pastor said, I'm going to stand. I'm going to open. Oh. I'm not going to fear the government. I'm not going to fear humanity. I'm going to fear God. I'm going to preach the gospel and invite people into the kingdom. Isn't so that amazing? So, yeah, so uh, here are the true stories here. Um, I, like, you know, pastors, if you don't, you, you don't open up your church, you are missing out. You are yeah. missing out the big opportunity. But we're not only missing on the opportunity, if we're allowing the government to dictate and to shut the church down smaller and smaller and smaller, and this is terrible precedent, Paul. This is not a good direction for the church and the people of God. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then I would like to uh, talk about the, uh, this election, you know, the result of this election. You know, since you have been in this political realm, you know, experienced um, talking to congressmen and so on, and you have deep insight. So share with us how, how, how critical this election is and the result of this how would it affect, you know, the well, critical... As we're seeing, elections have consequences, good and bad. Look, what, look at California. Look at California. Look what's happening to the church in California uh, from, the, from this type of a thing. And we want those types of leaders, Kamala Harris, to be our vice president. Think about that. She has done such evil in this state. So this, I talked earlier on this call with you, this abortion issue. Yes. The man who unearthed the abhorrent practice of selling aborted babies, humans, selling human parts for profit. I mean, babies. I mean, it's just uh, unreasonable. She went after David Delighted, arrested him, has thrown the book at him, raided his home, stolen all in the name of the government, stolen his computers and did all types of evil against him because he said this is wrong. That's Kalama Harris. Okay? She's evil. She does evil. Okay? Again, that you cannot be a Christian and vote for someone who does such evil. You cannot. Let alone they support homosexuality. They support them adopting children, homosexuals and lesbians. This isn't right. Children need a mom and a dad. And that's a whole other family issue. They are out to destroy America, period. I mean, and, and think about this. I don't, Paul, I can't get this. Kalama is black, okay? And there's all this BL Black Lives Matter. Well, guess what? Why are we exterminating the black race? Exactly. The abortion rate of black people exceeds the, the, the birth rate. Yes. The federal government, California's government, and, Ka uh, and Kalama Harris supports all this. Is, is exterminating the black race in the womb. It, it is just total hypocrite. Why don't, yeah, why don't we talk about this? And our, our dollars, tax dollars, we're paying for all this. Yeah. And they try to pre present themselves as the highest moral person and, and, and take that high moral ground, right? In the meantime, what they do are so evil. It is. It is. And you know what? Our, our, if we look at just at the Obama administration, what happened to Christians around the world, the beheadings, ISIS, ISIL, all these evil things, when you've got someone who fears God and at least has got the church's back in the government, 
look what has happened globally. Mm-hmm. Look how all that has come to a lull. Uh, uh, you know, there's somebody that's going to have the back of the church that's going to try to help free pastors from Iran or wherever they are, um, as uh, North Korea, and, and, and take these, quote, unquote, godly men and women who've been imprisoned and help set them free. Yeah. Yes. Elections have consequences, Paul. And there's really, and I'll tell you, Mike Pence uh, is a believer. He loves the Lord. I love Trump's stance on uh, on Christians and pastors and what he has said, even all the promises he's fulfilled. Look, Joe Biden does not have the back of Christians anywhere. I'll tell you that right now. And if, and if you're deceived by that, Kalama Harris is worse. She'll come after you. Amen. Okay. All right, thank you uh, so much. I uh, think, you know, to share is all this insight and true story and the exciting journey, you know, and I believe that. I do. Paul, I believe. Will you close this out in prayer? Because I believe if the church votes yeah. and all of our churches open and we vote and we yeah. can transform California for Christ. Okay, yeah. Can you say some encouraging word? Yes. I'm sounding alarm to especially Chinese you know, congregation. I hate to see Chinese churches absent yes. in this critical battle ground. So to the Chinese church, we need more Chinese and Asian pastors in Church United. So if you're a pastor, please reach out to me. Get on our list. We want to take you to California. We want to take you to Washington, D.C. and help stand with the church in California and the United States. Don't let California become China. Because it's, it's, it's happening. We're watching it happen. The state is communistic and it's coming after us. So let's rise up. Get your people to vote. And if you're not a pastor, encourage your pastor to join Church United and get him to get your congregation to vote 100%. Paul, you said 10%. I wanted 100%. Every person, 18 and over, needs to vote. And we need to vote for godly men and women. So, Paul, would you close us out? Okay, Father, we come before you. And we thank you for this great time. Uh, our heart are excited. I know that uh, your heart is also excited because you have seen the movement. We have seen the movement. It was seen the awakening. And uh, Lord God, we just ask that uh, that uh, through this, by the Spirit of Yahovah, though that that we you answer our prayers intercessions. We know how critical uh, this is. The election is, and we know how critical the consequences. You know, it will be if we put the wrong people on the position. And in the meantime, this, we just ask the Holy Spirit, you know, through fire, through, through the wind and the angels, you know, warring angels, and to wake up, you know, even, you know, just, just dreams and visions uh, with our churches, leaders, Christians, you know, while they have dreams, you, you know, at the night, let them see the, 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 the dreams, you know, and dream the dreams, and even in daytime, see the visions, Lord God. We know that you are in this. I personally, in, in spirit, spirit, I see very clear this is the war, world, uh, this is the World War Three. Yes. Spiritually. You know, yeah. it is that, it's that global scale. It will affect not just United States, it will affect globally. So, Lord God, our heart and desire is Jesus, you reign. And yes. before you come back, you, yes. I, I, yeah, I just ask you to empower, strengthen, in, um, and, and mobilize um, your, your churches. Yes. And to shine the light and take dominion you know, through the faith. And because this is the living faith. And, and this is why you put us here. And this is why you have churches here, especially in California. So I ask you to, in this critical moment, to personally, you, you send a wake-up call to all these church pastors who are now waking up. Yes, especially Chinese Pastors are yes, so Lord. important. They cannot be absent in this critical battleground because the Chinese has got such a, believers has got, got such an important calling at the end time. So they cannot be missing in action. So we pray that you have the 
powerful wake up awakening you know yes. throughout the churches especially chinese communities thank you lord in jesus name amen amen and amen i love you brother she -she. She -she. <laughs> <laughs>